um, does not want to bring Alaphilippe to the line, and he's uh, got an alliance going on with Alexis uh, Gougier. And in fact, uh, the pair of them are trying to put some pressure on Alaphilippe. So they're sitting on Alaphilippe, knowing that he's going to push on and uh, maybe give him a free ride. Still holding on is Massis Moric, the Slovenian. But Alaphilippe is being lent on here, and he's saying, come on, you better do some work. I'm not going to do this all on my own. And that's wasted energy when you're busy arguing. <laughs> that didn't do uh, 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 Tommy Vokler too much harm throughout his career, but it seems that Alaphilippe now has taken over that mantle of uh, cattle prodding those around him, Sean. Yes, he, well, he certainly is. Uh, he's doing a lot of it here in the last, uh, in the past 15 kilometres, and he's continuing on to do it. And of course, he can see uh, the riders getting away from there. That's the, uh, something he doesn't want uh, to continue there. And uh, he's trying to, you know, motivate or maybe, maybe we'll call it bullied a little bit, uh, the other riders Definitely. there. And uh, it's working. We can see there that uh, Soler is starting to, you know, uh, take his turn. And uh, that's what you've got to do. When you're so close to uh, stage victory, uh, just, it's just out there. You try, you try all of that tactic uh, on the final uh, 10, 12 kilometres. Gujar flicks the arm out. Uh, Kudus doesn't take it up this time. Kudus done uh, a lot of the chase work of which uh, Gujar took advantage of. Now he's doing his bit, but wants to share the load all of a sudden. Um, Kudus taking as ma the maximum rest he can. It's a strategy, Sean. As, uh, you know, it, it's hard to master really because you've got to have some real. Um, self-belief and indeed not be too afraid of the feelings of others around you you've got to harry wherever you can and try and get as much work out of those who you share the burden with as possible it's a delicate balance that you don't destroy the alliance yes well you have to uh, definitely get the others to your know, contribution we can see there with Alfa Lee it is working the other two riders uh, um, are uh, starting also to uh, do their turn and do their pace pulling on the front and uh, it's all going out here the uh, group further back we haven't seen them for a long time are they totally out of it now they'll get no time check at all and uh, we did see a bit further back on the road we could see them they were in our uh, in our view for a while but haven't seen them in the last uh, past kilometers this pair have got over seven minutes on the red jersey group um it's of no advantage to them at all because uh, their their uh, deficit overall is more than that but what they have got is the possibility of taking victory today. Unfortunately for them, they're only 15 seconds clear of the pursuers. And it's a couple of very handy pursuers as well in Mahawi Kudus and indeed Alexis Gujiar. And they are digging in. And in fact, they have shelled out Alaphilippe's group by the look of it. They found quite a margin. And this is a handsome one, Sean, that they built up. Yes, it is. Uh, we can see there they go through the 10 kilometres and uh, waiting for the Philippe group to, uh, to come through. As we can see there, it must be 15, maybe going on 20 seconds, and uh, they're working very well. But again, uh, when they do join up with the two men out in front, then it becomes uh, the problem who's going to do the pulling. But uh, we can see that they're all just giving it all here, and this is a real killer of a road, straight. Uh, the little bit of wind is there, it seems to be a side headwind, but uh, the two riders here are really digging in deep. They know that if they can get across here, that they have uh, a good um, possibility to get to the stage victory. Because the two men in front, as you can see, two more heavyweights, two you know big strong riders, um, more so you know the roller sprinter type compared to the two we have got on our picture at the moment. Well, Brian Smith must be choking on his paella at the moment. He's uh, he's out in Spain on his summer holidays, but I know he's watching us. Uh, Brian, your boy's doing a great job here. Um, uh, the Eritrean is uh, absolutely motoring, and indeed with the much more powerful man, Alexis Gujar. If it comes to a sprint between the pair of them, or in, indeed involving it, then Kudus will fail. However, he's a great climber as well, and he's had some terrific results in the Tour of Burgos, which is you know, quite a lumpy old thing. He got a uh, ninth place on the build-up to this race. Uh, that's in the GC, by the way. Um, so he's on terrific form at the moment. He went well in Romandy, likewise. And in fact, as a climber, if it becomes a quartet and it's got Mahawi on board, Mahawi Kudis, the 23-year-old Eritrean could get a famous result, be the best of his career if he manages to deliver it, and we wish him the best. It would be quite a fairy tale for him if he was to make it count. He's got Alexis Gougiar to deal with, who's a bit of a uh, bit of a strong man. And again, if he if he gets Gougiar to the line, I'm afraid Gougiar will out sprint him. There is no doubt about that. Not discounting, of course, the two are in front of them at the moment.
Gugia is uh, only 24 years of age. He's one of these guys who, you, you know, you look at old photographs of uh, uh, some people look ancient even when they're young, and he looks like um, he looks like a bouncer on occasion. But uh, but anyway, <laughs> um, he has actually taken a stage on the Welter in the past. It was two years ago, the run up to Avia, and that also had a kick at the end. Um, he's part of a breakaway, but sorted out Nelson Oliveira, Maxi Monfort, Amador, Mercado and Moina were also in the were all in the break. That day, Sean, he made it count, did Gugia, and he's got a great chance today. If this is a quartet, I think he has the sprint on him when it flattens out at the top. Well, he has a sprint on him, but will it, uh, will it arrive in the sprint? I'm uh, not too sure of that with the difficult sections we have uh, on this final uh, three plus kilometres. But Gugia. You know, he's a puncher, he's, you know, very explosive, and uh, when he gets into a, uh, a group like this, he can do it, and although he's, you know, with Kudus, who is a better climber, will he be explosive enough to get rid of him? Uh, they're all going to be, you know, thinking what way can they win this stage, but they still have, you know, a bit of guess, uh, a bit of do to get uh, onto the two out in front, and, um, you know, they're really working hard, but certainly uh, the two leaders um, are still just putting in a great effort here. And, you know, the two strong men, the two time trialers are just going to go all the way to the climb, it looks. And will they have enough in this 28 seconds, as we see in the peloton? It's totally knocked off. Everybody is just across the road here and uh, going out to seven and a half minutes for the peloton back on the front end of the race. Well, um, Chris Froome and Team Sky have accepted that it's going to be a breakaway victory, so may as well save some energy. They don't want to push on anymore, so they drift to the side of the road. And then everyone else thinks, well, I'm not doing it. <laughs> so this is a yeah, gentleman's excuse me going on at the moment. No, you have it. No, you have it. So they have knocked it right back, and it's going to be more than seven and a half minutes, possibly nearer eight, because these guys are going to push on. Deficit to the day's winner. Uh, there we are. That's the 6K to go banner. They've just been underneath, and they've got uh, an enhanced margin of 30 seconds on the chasers. Those chasers are Alexis Gugiar of AG Tola Mondial and Mojave Kudis of Team Dimension Data. And here they are. Well, this as well is a bit of arguing between these two. It's all very well playing cat and mouse, Sean, but the more you mess around, the bigger the, 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 the bridge you're going to have to engage with. And I'm afraid right now, as um, Gugiar gets rid of, is that his last drink? No, he's still got one on board here. There's kind of half-heartedly sharing the duty. They're both afraid of each other, Sean. Mm, uh, I think they're giving it you know, pretty close to the, uh, their best effort here. They know that they have to, you know, uh, really push on here. They'll be made very much aware of his, you know, 30 seconds to the men out in front. And um, with this uh, climb, you know, being just three kilometres, although it's a very difficult one, when it gets to that 30 plus seconds, well then, you know, will they be good enough to uh, uh, get across on the uh, final ramp to the finish? And it's, it's becoming very interesting here because uh, Kudus, of course, uh, you know, he's at 8.15 and we can see the peloton is just uh, slowing down. So um, that's going to be an interesting one for the race leadership. And annually, uh, we did see him, you know, he was at 7.49. Uh, we haven't seen him for a long time. Where is he at this moment? Because we haven't had any information. We haven't got any uh, picture of him for uh, a, a, a lot of kilometres now. So general classification as well. Will that change? Will the peloton start pushing on the final number of kilometres? Because at the moment, the pictures we see of peloton, they really seem to be knocked, knocked back totally. Indeed, team car going through, just getting clear. This is uh, team Katusha Alpacin just uh, sailing up. It's not a minute gap, but um, I'm not sure whether there's been a call coming in from Marco Halla. A car goes through, nonetheless, uh, to offer up some support. Great uh, as well to see the, the crowds gathered. Most notably, you'll see in shadows. It's a very hot day, nonetheless, not quite as punishing as yesterday. But they're about to take on the hurt, which is the light of the final climb. And it starts at 3.4 kilometers to go. So there are about 600 meters from where they need to start punishing themselves, Sean. They'll take on the task because there's a stage win up for grabs at La Vuelta. Yes, and very much so. And uh, yeah, I think um, Haller, it looked like, you know, one of these uh, a bit of a crazy attack on the descent. Where was he going? I was saying to myself, because with so many riders behind and a big group of chasers, didn't look like that he was going to have any chance. But 
That's bike racing, yeah, you know, sometimes you have to give it a go and you never know what can happen. And he's certainly in a real good position now with Lusenko. 30 seconds or two chasers here, will that be enough? Uh, depending on, you know, how they are feeling, because everybody has put in a huge effort. The two out in front, the two chasers on our pictures here. And uh, it's all about how much they have left in the tank going into this very difficult finish. Can't wait to see. To be honest, the last kilometres, um, it's at 1400 metres, they take a big turn. Uh, so 1.4, it will say on your ticker. They take a big left hander through the trees. I'm hoping the uh, helicopter gets a view of them. Uh, it's going to start grinding, and it's now. Now, there's uh, some flatter sections to the climb. They're on the climb officially now, but you can see it's not too much of a test. When, they, uh, when it goes loud, as it were, this climb, it gets very loud indeed. The, uh, if we mimic volume with incline, then it's going to be huge. And there goes Lashenko, and he says, see ya. Well, he was always the stronger of this duo, but has he got enough to carry it all the way to the line? The Kazakhstan rider has gone, and I'm afraid so has Marco Haller backwards, and he'll go into the clutches of uh, Kudus and indeed Gujiar, who are just behind. Now, what can Lashenko do when the road really kicks up? He's settling himself into a rhythm right now, and you'd expect that. And no surprise to see Kudus trying to shake out Gujiar. If he takes Gujiar to the line, then I'm afraid it will be Gujiar that has the faster finish. On the little cap flat section at the end, about 250 metres is flat once they've dealt with the climb. It still counts as part of the climb, which is why the incline has such a modest average. But uh, look at the way the camera shows you those standing at the side of the road. You can see the attitude they have to the asphalt. This is steep, and he's doing a great job. He stays seated, Sean, and up he goes. Yes, he is uh, looking powerful, you know, just pounding away, turning the pedals there and uh, sitting the saddle, as you say. And... Uh, yeah, 43 seconds we can see there, and uh, it looks like that's uh, he's going to go all the way. He's you know inside uh, the three kilometres to go, um, unless the uh, chasers Gujar and Kudus can really you know put in a big one here on the final bit. Um, looks like that uh, it's going to be the Astana rider that's going to take the glory today. Kudus decides to stretch his legs, and Gujar starts to fade the bigger man. But how we Kudus then? Now he's got a time trial, the time trial of his life on this climb. If he's going to make his target is up the road, Alexei Lutschenko, and here he goes, digging in. Well, he's a little guy who packs a lot, big punch when it uh, comes to an incline such as this. But is it too much? I believe it probably is, and this man's got to believe. All he can do is set a tempo. It's a coping strategy right now, Sean. He knows it's going to hurt, he knows it's going to burn, and he doesn't want to get fried by Kudus, who's on his case. No, he doesn't... Uh... Well, he's not going to think of anything, just keep working on it and, uh, you know, really just, uh, you know, dig deep and uh, just go into that uh, uh, suffering mode and uh, just uh, go for it and see what you can do. But he looks good, looks to be turning, you know, the pedals quite a good uh, pace for the moment and uh, Kudus, we can see there, he's also going quite well. He's using a lower gear, he has a higher cadence, so he's spinning a bit more. Uh, but the advantage we can see 35 seconds uh, if that's uh, if that's exactly uh, the case well then it, um, it's uh, all to play for but still you know we're still over two kilometers to go it's a long ways because the more steepest point uh, has still quite a lot of it to come there is Marco Haller is just about to be caught um, by Mojave Kudus who's behind this is Lushenko who's up front he goes underneath the 2k's to go banner now it flattens out ever so slightly and then in about four or five hundred meters it gets very very nasty indeed watch that clock that's back to Kudus it says 37 seconds at the moment Kudus has uh, found Marco Haller that's the first of his targets on this climb on the way up potentially to glory we will see looks like a bit of pace about him. There is Haller struggling and just coming underneath that 2k to go banner. Charging into the gap is Mahawi Kudus at the moment and here he is. He's almost there. That's the first of his targets but the gap to Lushenko has extended. That clock is back to this man, don't forget and it now says 40, 41 seconds. So, second place at best, we'll see because this man has got a whole load of hurt that starts in 300 metres. 
Yes, we can see there on this uh, straight just before there uh, we came around this little turn. Uh, nobody in sight and uh, 39 seconds. Uh, it's a nice advantage and uh, Lusenko still walking away very well. It's still sitting in the saddle, but some riders can be you know real powerful doing that. And Lusenko, you know, we've seen him in the past the way he can just ride in the final. Uh, but this is a, a real test for him because with this real. Uh, uh, high percentage uh, to the finish, but uh, he seems to be coping quite well. Yes, he does. Uh, just on Zips the Zerzi, only halfway, you understand, and he, he probably feels like he's got half of the stage remaining ahead of him. Such is the task. He's got 250 metres when uh, of flat at the top, but <laughs> to get there, he basically has to scale a mountain, and a real sheer face it will appear to be. Here comes Mahawi Kudis. Now watch the clock at the moment. Lushenko's still got an advantage. It bounces off 45. Now, is it going to go the way of the Eritrean, the clock, 43 seconds then, 42, uh, that will start to tick down, and it's to a launch, potentially, of Kudus, and he's got to really dig in right now. Likewise, you could say the same thing for this man, who's clawing his way up the mountain, uh, almost using his fingernails, Sean, he's, he's holding on here for glory. Yes, he is, uh, well, he's looking uh, impressive, uh, you know, he's just uh, still... Uh, really uh, working quite well. Looks to be going at a good pace there, turning uh, uh, the uh, turning the pedals quite well. A good cadence, and we can see Kudus. He's turning that little bit faster, but he's a lightweight uh, rider, a climber, and they do that. But uh, Luchenko, he's in the steep section now. This is where you have to dig deep, and uh, still that 39 seconds of an advantage. In about the next kilometre, Kudus has to find 37 seconds. He's lost 10 seconds, um, I can tell you, Lutschenko, in uh, around about the last 100 metres. So it can be done. However, uh, either one of them could crack. Meanwhile, we look back at the main body of the peloton. They're looking for space and maybe taking advantage. And TJ Van Garderen fancies just taking a vault forward in the overall classification. We remind you that there's a, a lot of riders who are very, very tightly set together in the overall. Uh, in fact, 11 seconds separate the top six. So TJ could move into second place if he finds just a modest margin of a second on Dunnock Cruz. And maybe he's even thinking of taking three seconds and taking the lead of this race. BMC are motivated. There are others as well around them who'd like to have a dig. And there's Contador as well, I see, bouncing into position for Trek Zagafredo, just reminding us that he's very much still here. 45 seconds, and it looks like it's Kudus that's gone pop here. Oh, my goodness, Lutschenko has ground his way in. Well, if the clock starts to bounce back the other way and it's going second by second, which suggests the clock is trying to struggle to find a reading and it swings back towards Kudus. Don't trust the clock then is the answer. It sets at 34. We'll see what it is at the end. Toughest section he's been through right now, but he's still got a lot to do. There's the Flamme Rouge. He's got 800 metres shorn of hurt before it flattens out. Can he deliver? It looks like he will. Yes, it looks very much he can uh, hold on because uh, 35 seconds uh, he's uh, you know been holding that it's been just going up and down by two to three seconds but I think uh, Kudus when he went in the attack there when he uh, dropped uh, Gujar um, that was uh, yeah, the, the time when we would see if he could uh, start eating into the advantage of Lusenko but he's holding off and 37 seconds at the moment it has to be enough to go all the way uh, for the Katusha uh, for the uh, Astana rider. Here comes Kudus closing the gap but I'm afraid it looks all too late 36 seconds looks like a cushion that I think that Lushenko could sit on. He stayed planted in his saddle and he starts to hit the flat section. Oh, this is going to feel joyous for the 24-year-old Kazakhstani. Here he comes, sails round past uh, the uh, swimming pool complex by the looks of things. He'll be jumping in that for joy a little bit later on. Uh, brave effort by Mahawi Kudus, but just leaving it a little bit too late. The timing was wrong. He had passenger out there as well with Alexis Gugiar. He tried to shake him out but maybe should have gone earlier but it's going to be Kazakhstan and Astana I'm afraid that's a celebrating tonight and he has a look back he's still got this steep section not quite on the final flat but I think he's going to bring it home Sean but he looks like he's struggling even now Yes, well, I think he's on a steep section once again there, and uh, he's looking around, but I think he'll be made aware of the advantage he has got. Um, when you get you know, that, that close to the finish, uh, unless you really hit the wall, you have to be able to hold on, and I think uh, Kudus have been really uh, you know, pushing on for quite a while, for quite a bit further down this climb, and he hasn't you know, uh, pulled back really anything. 
looks like that is Luchenko's day today. Well, just looking back here, and uh, you're finding some very big names. Fabio Ruiz only 38 seconds down. He'd like to grab a few more. If Sky have done a lot of the chasing today, maybe there's an angle for them to take some time back on Chris Froome. Here's Luchenko. Well, it wasn't the final flat section uh, for him, but he's in the Hornet section right now, and rather nervously, still looking over his shoulder, Sean. But this man looks like, I'm afraid, um, his heart... Well, he's got a big heart, but I'm afraid he hasn't got what it takes to deliver the killer blow. Not today, but he came close. Yes, he did. Well, he gave it a good effort, and uh, he immediately, you know, started to push on when it kicked up uh, in the very earlier part of the climb, and he knew he had to do that because the advantage uh, to the two at that point, Lusenko and Haller, uh, he had to go for it and uh, looked impressive when he did go. But we can see there now he's starting to suffer from the efforts. And I think, yes, the, the, you know, the ride into the climb as well has taken a lot out of this this man because the, uh, he had to really push um, uh, push hard with uh, Guj, uh, with Guj, uh, Gujar. And uh, um, I think that has uh, taken that, that bit from him and uh, Lus Lusenko is going to go all the way. Alexei Lysenko finally deals with the climb and now he's got to deal with success. He took a stage in the Paris-Nice last year, the year before one in the Tour of Switzerland. He's never had a result such as this, but right now Lysenko is going to take a stage, the biggest of his career, in La Vuelta. And well done to him. What a brave effort it was, firstly to get into the break and then to have the guts to go out and shake off all opposition from some very high quality riders who probably would have thought of a stage victory ahead of this man, but he has done it. The clock ticks on 14, 16, 17 seconds. This is the gap back down to Mahawi Kudis. Little bit of a lack of uh, timing perhaps from him, but you never know how Lachenko would have responded. He was able to tempo up the climb. Driving into it was Mahawi Kudis of Eritrea and indeed Dimension Data. And it's going to be a long old wait. I think he realized that uh, the game was up and the clock still hasn't stopped on Mahawi Kudis. Meanwhile, we look further back down the mountain and this is about marking each other out. This is an effort to put a man up uh, just ahead for Chris Froome potentially to use a little bit later on. But you can see Chavez in the white jersey nursing that combined jersey on behalf of Chris Froome. Froome himself is actually right there in the red jersey as well just wrestling but being guided up this and in fact it's a hurt tempo that's being put on right now by team sky just to make sure that nobody is mad enough to take him on yes well i think on a climb like this you have to you know make a, a strong tempo otherwise the riders going to start thinking of attacking and uh, team sky as we have seen you know so many occasions they just push you know riders on the front and they have been uh, doing this on the run into the climb. We haven't unfortunately seen it today because we've been concentrating on the battle out for the, for the stage victory. But again, you know, they're just uh, really putting the hurt on <laughs> here on everybody. We can see the way the, uh, the peloton is stretched out. Well, we're staying with this battle because uh, as the, uh, the breakaway come home and across the line. But right now it's a battle that's uh, being the general, I should say, is indeed Chris Freeman's guy. They're doing a phenomenal job. Froome's called for this, and to have something this much in reserve as they wound in some of the break. There's uh, Luis Masponet, they find first, and still they're there. But just look at the man who is stalking them. This is phenomenal from Esteban Chavez. He wants a piece of the day as well. Uh, it's all about the gap for these guys further back down the road. There's the clock ticking on for you. It's a battle within uh, it, it, within a, a, a busy battlefield that we're watching right now, Sean. Yes, well, there's a big battle on, and uh, it's Sky is, you know, putting the battle up here, and uh, the peloton is just exploding big time, and um, we can see the riders, you know, gaps peering everywhere. And that something uh, you would expect on a very difficult running like this. We can see here the group of Chris Froome, 20 maybe riders there, 25 riders possibly. We and can see goes for it. He digs in. Cotonou can't stay with him. He goes backwards. Chavez tries to uh, keep on board with Chris Froome. This is about imposing yourself. And Chris Froome here might even be hunting for a few seconds. He'll be looking for a gap himself. Flags are in the way. The motorcycle's been called out, so he doesn't offer up too much assistance from those behind. And Chris Froome has a, a bit of a shakeout. In fact, draws, what, five, six riders along with him. Sits back down. Cotonou gets out of the saddle. He thinks he can go 
for it again. Just uh, screened, I'm afraid, this action by the trees as we stand. Uh, Zacharin, I think, uh, thought about it, and he's gone backwards. And there it is. You can see Contador with his rolling shoulders just by the centre line. Chavez in the white jersey by the hoardings, and Chris Froome dead centre. Woods is also there, and so is TJ Van Garderen in the, the black and red of BMC. But Chris Froome looks behind. Uh, he's playing with them, Sean. This is quite remarkable, and he may well maul them in a few moments when he comes around the corner. If he's got anything left, he'll find a second or two if he can get it. Yes, well, I think he's going to find uh, a bit of time, take a bit of time on some of the other uh, riders who are very close to him. David De La Cruz, of course, from Quick Step Flows. We cannot see him there, but there's riders just scattered all over this uh, final time. Yes, they are, and uh, yes, doing a, a phenomenal job of it as well. Gosh, here we go then. Dig in. Chris Froome says, no, you're not going to have me. Uh, Contador follows it, follows on, trying to at least get a positional bragging rights over Chris Froome. Woods comes through, and there is uh, Chavez as well, very close at hand. Oh, this is fantastic stuff by Chris Froome. In fact, he's knocked back a lot of major players for the title here. And this will start the clock, really, from now to some of those who have been left behind on this mountain. Here's TJ Van Garderen, who uh, uh, takes a, a few more seconds, I'm afraid, to add to his deficit. Uh, Simon Yates, I think it is, which crosses the line right now. One of the Yates brothers. There is uh, uh, Aru as well. Warren Barkey was also up there uh, towards the front in the frame. My goodness, Sean, that was a real, real dig that they had to uh, engage with. And there, Adam, I think it was, just bowing his head as he crossed the line. And Vincenzo Nibali. Yes, and we could see Nicholas Roach coming in there. We could also see Kelderman just coming in. And... Just uh, you know, gaps of five and seven seconds between a lot of riders there. There is the day's winner. He's already phoning home. I'll call him E.T. Goodness me. Biggest win of his career. And what a solid way to do it, Sean. Well, as he has done in the past um, in uh, races where... Uh, not as big as this one. This is definitely, you know, the biggest one of his career, and not surprising he's making uh, uh, the call there. But amazing, like how powerful he was on the final climb for a, you know a big, strong roller. He went up that climb just uh, magnificently because with Kudus he's a real climber, and you know he just wasn't able to you know take really anything back from on the uh, final three kilometer up to the finish. Lutschenko takes it. The margin to Kudus at the line was 42 seconds. Kudus runner up on the day. Mark Soler, it was, of Movistar that managed third place ahead of Matej Moric, who refound himself, the Slovenian. Good result for him. He finished a minute and 11 down with Gujar fading to a minute and 24. But look at this. Contador doesn't find a gap on Chris Froome, but gets a, 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 a quality finish, I think it's fair to say. Gets a ball, uh, finished eighth. Uh, Mamakin was ninth on the day. These were all two minutes and more down. Uh, Contador finishing just ahead of Chris Froome and Michael Woods with uh, Chavez in that vanguard. Eight seconds further back was TJ Van Garderen. Um, just looking at some more late results. Adam Yates, it was, um, that crossed the line just after TJ. So apologies for that if I mashed it, but I believe... Uh, we called it right. Uh, Simon Yates finishing at 26, 4 minutes and 52 down. So uh, Yates brothers bragging rights, 10 seconds difference. Adam with the nod today. Finished with Nicholas Roach, Fabio Aru. So they were 4 minutes and 20 down, but compared to the 4.31, 4 minutes and 42, I beg your pardon. So they gave away, uh, what, 11 seconds. Let's see some of those who uh, had even worse deficits. Vincenzo Nibali, 4 minutes and 57. Froome finished in 4.31. So 26 seconds, Vincenzo Nibali says goodbye to on this climb. Um, Rui Costa, again, also suffering. 5 minutes and 8 down today. So um, down on Chris Froome's finish time of 4.31. Lutschenko takes it then today. This is your, your stage. Kudus, Soler, Moric and Gugliar. But overall, it's been an enhancement for Chris Froome in the red jersey.